Well, in a lot of the areas that I hunt, coyotes are a nuisance and they need to be managed. I run cattle and me and the boys have had issues where every one of us have found calves that were killed by coyotes. So managing coyotes is an important part of management, just like any other species. But I'll tell you, when it comes to managing coyotes, I'll use any method I can. I'll use trapping where legal, I'll, use, I'll call them in with electronic calls or mouth calls, I'll set up baits, I'll hunt them over water, I'll even hop into a helicopter and I'll shoot them from a helicopter. And although shooting them from a helicopter isn't really a sporting hunt, for management, it's probably the most efficient way I've ever seen to roll some coyotes and help save some not only animals, small game, but also livestock. For predator calls, I've used all kinds of stuff. Again, I've used mouth calls and I've used e-calls, but if I was to choose just one call, I would say an electronic call is the way to go. The Western Rivers, I actually helped design a Western Rivers call with some sounds that I custom recorded. So I love an e-call because you can get that call away from you. You'll notice that usually the call is anywhere from 30 yards to 100 yards away from my location on almost all these hunts, no matter where I'm at. So there's a lot of little things that I'll change in strategy, but getting the call away from your location to me is absolutely key. Doesn't matter, public land, private land, pressured coyotes, non-pressured coyotes, you want those coyotes coming into the call and not focused on you and coming into you. Odds are you're gonna get a broadside shot, you're gonna be able to position that coyote where you want it, but you're also, odds are not gonna get spotted when you're either lifting up your gun or moving to get the shot, taking the safety off, any of that stuff. When you're blowing a mouth call, the coyote is pinpointed on your location. He's coming to you. So that's one of the reasons, even though mouth calls are great and I've had some great success with them, if I had to choose, I'm gonna go with an electronic call and I'm gonna set it out away from my position. I also, you'll notice in a lot of these videos, I'm using a decoy. It can be as simple as a feather on a string or it can be as elaborate as one of the GSM or Western Rivers calls that's bouncing around, that's battery activated or one that you can run off your call. So I'll run the gamut. But the more things you can have to fool a coyote, the better you are. I like to use a sound from electronic call to fool their ears. I'm on it. Then I'm on it. I like to use a decoy to fool their eyes. Then a lot of times I'll use some conquest scent, either coyote scent, rabbit scent to fool their nose. That's three senses I've got duped and that increases my odds of calling a coyote in and keeping him there long enough for the shot. Did you see him bow up at the call? Oh yeah, dude. Was that awesome? He came right up to the call. So the next thing is choosing a sound. And that is a hugely important part of being successful when you're coyote hunting. For example, I went down to Alabama because Jackie Bushman said, Fred, I know we have coyotes here. We've tried to call them in, but we're just not having luck killing these coyotes. Can you come down and see if you can help us out? I went down there and I played any sound in the world except the rabbit in distress. And I did that because I knew those guys had been playing a rabbit in distress call. I played a puppy in distress. I played turkey sounds. I played snowshoe rabbit sound. There's not a snowshoe rabbit in Alabama, but it was a sound they had never heard before. And the coyotes came in just like coyotes that had never heard the sound before. So it worked out great. Holy smokes, that's how you call in. That's how you call in an Alabama coyote. You can see that this is an older coyote. He's probably been running around these Alabama woods for a while, killing a lot of fawns, a lot of small game. Another time, I've got a buddy in Iowa, and Tim called me up, he said, Fred, man, I've been calling these coyotes and we're just not having any luck. Do you want to come out and see if you can call some in? I said, heck yes. We rolled into Iowa. First morning, I shot two coyotes on video. <laughs> that is a big Iowa male dog. Look at that guy. I smoked him on the run. Yes! 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 Iowa coyote on the run! <laughs> Bang! Look at that beautiful Iowa coyote. Got a nice fur on him. Yeah. My buddy said, what's the trick? I said, no trick. Just called two in and shot him. He said, what sound did you use? I said, well, I said, let me ask you what sound you use. And he said, well, 
we use the rabbit in distress. And I said, that's why I got coyotes. I didn't use the rabbit in distress. So one of the keys for coyote hunting and being successful is playing sounds that the coyotes haven't been educated to. A lot of people will tell me, well, nobody's ever called my property, so I'm sure these coyotes aren't pressured. I'm like, unless you own 30,000 acres, the odds are those coyotes have heard a call because coyotes can travel long distances. You may have a coyote in one spot in one day, 10 miles away the next day. So even if you've never called your property, but somebody two properties over has called, odds are your coyotes are educated or they've been educated somewhere unless they're first year pups. A lot of coyotes now are getting educated because a lot of people are realizing how much fun it is to hunt coyotes. That is awesome. So what I do to get around the educated coyotes is I play sounds they haven't heard. I steer away from a rabbit in distress call unless I am 100% sure that those coyotes probably haven't been hunted. I'll use a jackrabbit in distress, a snowshoe in distress, prairie dog in distress, bird in distress, a coyote in distress. I'll use dogs in distress, goats in distress, chickens in distress. I'll use whatever call I have access to besides a rabbit in distress call. And I will call coyotes in and not only public land, but hard pressure private land because they're not used to hearing that sound. Bleak calls, bird calls, guinea, guinea pig calls. I've used all kinds of different sounds on my Western rivers and my Fox Pro call that coyotes have not heard before to bring them in close. By switching your call up and playing sounds that coyotes have never heard, I have a lot more success. The other thing I do is I play nonstop. I've been fortunate to have predator hunted in a lot of areas where I could see coyotes coming from a long ways and watch their reactions. And I've noticed a lot of times if I shut a call off, doesn't matter if I'm using coyote vocalizations or a food source or a curiosity source, whatever I'm using, a lot of times when I cut the call off, the coyotes will lose interest and they'll go another way. But if I play nonstop, odds are the coyotes are gonna come in. The other thing I do is I turn the volume down. A lot of people have that volume way too loud and it tends to intimidate or the coyote realizes something's not right. You don't need to play the sound very loud. If you can hear it from 60 yards away, then a coyote could probably hear it from close to a mile away. So turn down the volume, you'll call in coyotes closer and you'll have more success. You know, when you're hunting places like Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Wyoming, Nebraska, there's a lot of places where you've got tons of country and can see a coyote coming in and have plenty of time to react and set up. However, if you're hunting places like Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Kansas, there's a lot of places where the cover may be a little thicker. You may be hunting river bottoms or thick brush and you just don't have, you, you, you don't have the visibility to see that coyote come in and you have to be ready for a quick shot. In those states, I take advantage of small fields. I may take advantage of two tracks, roads, especially a four-way or even a two-way where I can set up me and a buddy and we can watch two different directions and we'll be set up on a tripod. So if the coyote comes out and we only have one or two seconds, we can make the shot. <laughs> yeah! That's another thing that I think has helped lead to my success. You'll see in almost all these videos, I'm using at least a bipod and usually a tripod. So I have a good stable shooting platform. I prefer the bog death grip now because I can actually even tighten my gun in it and go hands-free until I need to make my shot. It's like shooting off a bench and I can pivot off it. But having a stable platform to shoot off of will increase your odds of not only harvesting a coyote and making a quick shot or a clean shot at longer range, but also on running shots. A lot of times you'll call in multiple dogs or we all miss every once in a while and you gotta make a quick follow-up shot. One reason I like an AR, I've got a lot of follow-up shots all I have to do is keep pulling that trigger and tracking the target. But again, a solid rest helps me follow up. And if I miss a coyote, helps me get him. Or if there's multiple coyotes, 
I can shoot one and then go to the next one and then go to the next one quicker and more stable. You know, besides harvesting coyotes, helping people manage coyotes where they're having issues with them, I also enjoy working fur. There is a certain amount of pride that comes with skinning, fleshing, stretching and drying your own furs that you've harvested and taking them into a fur buyer and selling them. To me, that's the ultimate form of respect for that animal. I respect it enough to not only harvest it for management purposes, but also to utilize that fur. To know that might be worn in a garment, it might be used for something else, but it's something that I did to show the ultimate form of respect for that animal. To me, it's like enjoying the game meat off a deer, an antelope, an elk, or anything else. So I try and utilize those coyotes as well.